I was in a job that I knew wasn't fulfilling my full potential, but I couldn't just leave the job because I couldn't afford to go to school on my own. Finally, um, the position was eliminated, giving me a chance or a push to go back to school to um, better myself and my family. I've always loved helping other people out and that's what um, really pushed me forward in nursing. Um, I knew I wanted to do something with a career where I could get going quickly and didn't want to spend a lot of time in school. Well, with the nursing degree, it seemed to be the best fit for me and I'm really glad I did. Um, I'm also a foster parent and so my heart is really in giving. The reason it's important to me to be a foster parent is because I was in foster care when I was younger. And there's just such a need in the state of Illinois right now for foster care that I wanted to be a part of it. Through the CFS program, um, before I even thought about going back to school, I was able to use multiple things that they offer. Um, I was able to use the winterization program. My children, all of my foster children, went through the CEFS Head Start program. I also used the CEFS PIP program, which was um, an electric um, assistance program. It wasn't easy asking for help, and I was really nervous, and there was tons of paperwork to start out, but it's always a process, and um, everybody was very helpful. It took me two years to go through my prerequisites for my degree, and then uh, the first year was the first two semesters, of nursing and then I failed the second semester so I had to wait another whole year to go through to start where I was at on the second semester. It was very hard. Um, once I failed um, the semester I you know it, it was hard not to just say I wanted to give up but I knew if I came all this way I took all those classes and I didn't want it to be for nothing and I couldn't show my kids that you can just give up. Even though I'm a nurse now I plan to go on um, back to school to get my bachelor's in nursing and maybe even go back to teaching to give back to the community even more. I think that I would either be in the unemployment line right now if, I w if it wasn't for CEFS or even on a state system. Um, I would have benefit benefited so much from CEFS. Sometimes when the politicians say that we just need to get a job or to um, pull ourselves up or do it on our own. We're trying. In the rural areas, there's not as many opportunities for work. We need to be able to have that help to be able to help others later. The advice that I would give to other people going through these trying times is to never give up. Look for help. You can make it through it. You can do more, and we all need to. In the summer of 2011, I had lost my job in manufacturing and I knew that my lifelong dream was to become a teacher and I knew that I wanted to finish my education. There was a scholarship being offered through the Herba office and I had already been at Lincoln Trail College for one semester and applied for this scholarship and I received the scholarship. And then I met Carla, my angel, <laughs> and she offered all sorts of programs for me um, to complete my degree. Support for our utility bills. I was able to get gas cards to help me back and forth with my commute to Charleston where I ended up commuting to Eastern Illinois University from Robinson five days a week, 62 miles to Charleston, 62 miles home. There were times I thought I can't do this next semester because I can't afford it. How am I going to be able to pay my house payment, pay my electric bill, pay my water bill, and keep food on the table, and then still go to school? Because there was no way I could possibly work and go to school commuting back and forth to Charleston. So there were a lot of times I thought I needed to just give up, but I was able to bounce back every time. After I completed my degree in December of 2015, I started substitute te teaching. So I'm actually substitute teaching almost every day in the Palestine School District. There will be a couple openings in the Palestine School District this coming year. And there are also a few openings in other districts. I actually have an interview today. My kids are very involved in sports. They did a lot of travel sports. They did a lot of um, sports with the school 
And I can remember my son saying, Mom, I want you to be a teacher and I want you to finish your degree. He said, I don't have to do travel basketball anymore. <laughs> and of course, you know, I know that they wanted to sacrifice too. And now that, you know, they're older, it's fun to hear that they have said to their friends how proud they are of me. And I think that that's really great. I have actually recommended Carla and the Herba program to several incoming college students for this next year because I feel like I was able to really become more successful because of all of the help that I've had. Back when I was 26 years old, after bouncing around from job to job and being immature for many years, I decided to get clean and sober because I knew that alcohol and drugs were clouding my life. And I did so. I got clean, I got sober, I uh, got a job at uh, Kennemental out by the airport and uh, kept that job for 14 years. It was just a moment of weakness. I saw a 12 pack of Budweiser in the store and within a couple of weeks my life was starting to fall apart. 2005 I started the alcohol and the drugs. 2008 is when it culminated with my going to the Illinois Department of Corrections for a uh, seven year sentence. I lost the family, I lost my house, I lost a uh, brand new car, I lost a 401k plan that I had. Yes, everything was destroyed. You know, I believe I was rescued when I was arrested and sent to prison because uh, for one thing it kept me from going deeper into the drug trade and it also helped me to discover a cancer that was sitting inside of me. And uh, that was treated and through five surgeries I became a cancer survivor while inside. It's supposed to be a period of rehabilitation. Most inmates don't use it as that, but I decided to do so. And I changed and decided that I wanted to contribute to society. I wanted to make this world just a little bit better for me having been here. After coming out of DOC in January of 2015, there weren't any uh, facilities or people that I could contact that would give me work or that would helped me out until I ran into Community Action. And the Community Action Agency gave me a chance to uh, work again, to earn a dollar or two of my own that wasn't given to me by the state or by public aid. And it gave me a sense of self-esteem again, a sense of uh, self-pride, self-worth to get started back on this path to uh, recovering my life. The programs I was able to take advantage of uh, were included lead abatement. Uh, I was a licensed lead abatement worker. I'm a licensed asbestos abatement worker, a uh, licensed lead renovator. Uh, I learned how to run a skid steer. Rockford Community Action was very, very helpful. Uh, they were very receptive to the fact that the people they were working with were uh, coming out of prison. When I came into the Community Action Program, their, their, their desire was for me to become a contributing member of the society. And what it needed for Community Action's help to work was for me to want to do that. I, wanna, I want the world to see the people that go to prison can change. I mean, because they see a lot of people don't change. People change. It's the desire to change has to be there. I'm a prison fellowship volunteer. I write to men in prison to tell them what they need before they get out. I uh, work with the local church. I'm a, I tutor fifth graders and under uh, in school. And uh, that's just helping me to be a part of this community instead of apart from it. In 2012, my, my family moved in here in Southern Illinois. It was me, uh, my late husband, my two years old son at that time, and myself, we moved in here. And uh, that was April 2012. April 23rd, my late husband passed away. It was difficult because I don't have any family at that, at that time. It's just me and my son. I didn't wait. I enrolled in Shawnee Community College. I explained to them my situation, and um, I was accepted in the nursing program. At that time, my instructor told me about the program of Shawnee Development Council. They helped me with my attrition, um, my books, my uniform. Awesome. At one point, I was able to get assistance with my utility bills. 
and they also helped me with um, the maintenance of my car and it really helped me because in nursing program we have to go to Paducah, Marion and uh, before Marion is uh, an hour from where I live and uh, I'm really glad that I have they helped me to get a dependable car. I think the biggest part is uh, child care. My son, his name is Spencer. He's six years old right now. He's in the first grade and he's really doing good in school. So um, that's one thing that really keep me going. It just make me like, okay, I have to do something. I have to help myself. I can't be like, I can't do this because um, I don't know. I, I'm just learning the language and I don't know if I will be a good nursing student. And uh, at the same time, also, I'm also worried about my son. But I said, this will not stop me. I have to do something. So it just keep me going, especially uh, with Shawnee Development Council. They don't know me and they offered all this help for me. They're there to support me. So I was like, I won't let them down. <laughs> I am working right now. I'm working in an rehab, nursing and rehab center. Um, I start working there in November last year. In a year, I'm planning to go back for my RN program. I want to change people's life. I want to help people. And uh, if uh, there's something I can do to help them feel better, I'll do it. This is a great opportunity for me to thank them. Thank you very much. I know you guys don't know me, but giving me the opportunity, it really changed my life. I would not be here right now. I would not be helping people right now without you guys. You just don't know how much you helped me. I was there like, I almost that. I would just be somebody that will sit down and just, just wait until help will come. But you guys came and tell me I can do it for you guys to give me assistance, especially with my son. That is tremendous help for me. When I look back, I never see myself being like this without you guys. Thank you very much.